Hello, Bow Church. I want to give a little bit of an announcement and an introduction to this video channel. We've set this up because, as you might have heard tonight, the church has decided to shut all its buildings. The Church of England has said that necessarily for the safety and protection of life, all church buildings will now be shut. And although we've been trying to keep things uh, to a degree open over the last week or two, we're going to have to change things up and get a little bit creative in how we're going to do things. And so I just want to give you a flavour of what life might be like as a church scattered at this time. So church is going to look a little bit different, obviously, but church is still happening because church is us and we are people following Jesus together in community in Bo or wherever you are. Uh, I want you to know that you're loved. I want you to know that you haven't been forgotten, that wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you're known and you're loved by us, by each other, but also by God. Okay, so I've got three things to say to you. The first is stay safe. Please follow the government's advice, particularly when it comes to social distancing. It's something that it really will be irrelevant very soon. Right now it's preventative. But the value and influence of social distancing will go down over time. So right now, it really is about saving lives. The kindest and most helpful thing you can do as a follower of Jesus is to, whenever possible, keep your distance from any kind of social gathering. Also, the next few months are going to be pretty rocky. So part of staying safe is keeping mental, physical and spiritual health. And so I'm going to encourage all of us to reach out to one another and to play a part in encouraging health and well-being wherever we can, particularly those of us that have to self-isolate. We're going to need each other more and more in the days and weeks ahead. If you're struggling, then as my friend Charlie Mackesy says, the bravest thing you can do is ask for help. So please just send a message, pick up a phone, or just scream out the window. Maybe someone will hear you. But ask for help. We can't do this alone. We're going to need each other in the weeks and months to come. So the first thing I've said is stay safe. But actually, I want to say that our faith, our common faith in Jesus is really important at this time. In fact, faith is kind of four moments like this. And so let's keep it simple and get to the heart of our faith. So let's love God and love our neighbor. Firstly, love God. The building is shut, but we can still worship Jesus. It starts with a personal decision that we want to root our lives into the life of God, that our lives will be a different type of presence in this world. And as the chaos increases, we're going to have to determine ourselves to be different from the chaos. But to be a non-anxious presence, we need to find ourselves wrapped up in the Prince of Peace. And so I'm going to ask us to make this decision together to worship God in this time. Because it's pressure that distorts perspective, but worship that restores it. As we magnify God, we see things more clearly. And the circumstances that we're in will confine our minds, will wrestle our hearts to the ground. But what we need is to break out in worship. To restore our perspective, we need worship. And so there's going to be prayer resources coming over email, ways we can unite over Zoom and through PDFs and just ringing each other up and shouting out the windows. Maybe we should get those like little telephone can things all over bow and have a good sing song. But worship starts with a posture of the heart. And in terms of our hearts like, and how we organize our, our, the desires of our hearts and how we organize our lives, Cedar is really an opportunity to do that. And, you know, you've been... I imagine if you're listening to this, you've been coming to Bow Church in the, in the recent time. And if you've been coming to Bow Church since Christmas, you will have heard about Cedar. In fact, you will have heard like nothing but me talking about this thing called Cedar that's about to happen. And you might have thought that the one good thing to come out of the last few weeks is, oh, thank goodness, at least I won't have to hear anything about Cedar. Well, you're not off the hook. It's coming for you in the next weeks you're going to be bombarded with video content so that we can all do see there together which is really an opportunity to grow as disciples even in this extraordinary time and in fact we started see that in person we managed one gathering before we had to distance ourselves from one another and, and the things that we talked about there feel eerily prophetic see that doesn't just seem important but now it seems vital and so i look forward to doing see there together as a church I'm reminded of the motto of the Cartusian monastic order that says in Latin, hold on, 
stat crux dom volvator orbis. I don't speak Latin, but apparently that means the cross is steady while the world is turning. And that's what's at the heart of our worship, that we believe that there is a God who is not intimidated by this moment, but is present and worthy of our worship, a God who is steady. In the cross, we find a still place in which our perspective is restored. And secondly, love your neighbor. Now, if you're relatively healthy, what would be classed as low risk by the government's advice, maybe it's as simple as just literally knocking on your neighbor's door, maybe backing away, not running away, because that's called, what's it called, cherry knocking? Don't do that. But safely communicate with your neighbors, knock on the door. Maybe it's a little note through the letterbox saying, how can I help? If you feel you can help, maybe it's running errands or, or really just saying, hi, I just want to let you know that I care and I'm here if you want to chat on the phone. Um, practically love your neighbor, your actual neighbor, or, or maybe just someone close to you. Currently, as we're filming this, we're still trying to figure out how we're going to continue to do food bank. Who knows exactly how that's going to go, but it's likely we'll continue in some form being a distribution center of food. But how exactly we're going to do that, I'm not sure. So keep your ear to the ground for new information. But more than that, pray. Pray for a miracle because people know us as a place where food is gathered and distributed for those that need it. We live in a borough that has the highest percentage of free school meals of anywhere else in the UK. The schools are shut. That means that children and families will not have enough food. So pray that we can use what we have, which is a known place, a structure of, of receiving and distributing food, that we can continue to do that in a safe way that blesses our parish. So love your neighbor, your actual neighbor, <laughs> Pray and help with food bank when you can. And also, I want you to know that we've created an incredibly sophisticated spreadsheet. And we are making sure that every one of our church community and increasingly other people that we pick up and we get to know that we're keeping records of, we're checking in of. And so you're hopefully going to receive calls and texts and emails, however you receive information from people in the church, just saying hi and making sure we're okay. And so that's that's what it is at the moment, what it means right now to love your neighbor. But loving God and loving your neighbor, they aren't going anywhere. We're just going to have to continue to adapt and to create new ways of doing that. And in the coming weeks and months, I think we're actually up for an adventure. Of course, this is going to be really hard. This isn't going to be an easy time. There will be tragedy. There will be frustration. There will be sadness. There will be grief and anger. There is a time for all those things. But this is also a moment of creativity. So in summary, stay safe. Please follow the government's advice. It's the best thing you can do. And also, nothing's changed. Faith is for times like this. So love God. Worship. Decide in your heart to worship Jesus. Pressure distorts perspective, but worship restores it. I want us to stay expectant. I think actually it's times of social disruption and upheaval that although bad, often wakes the church up. So the church can find sure footing. And let's be honest, the church actually hasn't been in a solid place in this country for a long time. But this is an opportunity for us to let the past be the past and to step into this present future with the, the tools that God has given us, with prayer, with love, with faith. And so, Bow Church, let's pray and stay expectant for what God will do amongst us in this time. So we're going to speak again soon, but let me pray for us now. Lord Jesus, we need you. We need your Holy Spirit. We cannot do this without you. So right now, wherever we are, we turn our hearts to you. We want to know you in this time, to trust you in the chaos to seek you for the future. Give us courage and imagination and kindness for those around us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.